Hello friends, welcome back to the midpoint of Season 9. We dropped again to 57th in Platinum 3. Hopefully we're going to come out with a win today. We're taking on UNCH Prometheans. We're going to go in with Old Reliable today, Void Blade and Ghost Rider, because we have Mr. Fisk back on the Buffet nodes, same as Last War. Got a full slate in Tier 1, so let's get right to it. First up, we have a 6-star Mutant on the immunity node and it is a Deadpool X-Force. Uh, so I usually take, sometimes I'll take Blade in on this node, um, but since you know the bulk of Blade's damage relies on bleed, um, you're really putting yourself at a large disadvantage here. Um, but sometimes I will take that risk anyway if, uh, if it looks like I'm going to have a lot of fights ahead for Void. Um, just to conserve his health pool as much as possible, you know, he block damage, take a hit here and there, you, you never know. Um, but uh, this fight, I was pretty sure it was going to be Deadpool going in. Uh, wasn't worried about it. Uh, it's easier to manage his power gain with Void because you know you get the petrifies up and it completely nerfs it to the ground. So uh, this is a pretty quick fight. Nothing too special going on, and down he goes. Moving on to the Power Start 1 Plague Mine Cornered. No, this is a Nebula 6-star. So two 6-stars in a row, higher health pools. Uh, had a little trouble here at the beginning getting her to bait or getting her to throw her special. Um, I thought I was out of range here. Took a blocked hit on the end of the special, but, you know, not a big deal. I've also got the Petrify up, which is nice. Um, you know, Void doesn't crit very often. His crit rating is pretty low comparatively. Um, but just in case I activate her regen like I do right there, the Petrify will uh, knock it in half, at least until I stun her, which, uh, as with any other robot, cancels out uh, self-repair buffs. So I got the second Petrify up. Uh, I don't think I need it uh, for the rest of this fight here, but um, I was trying to bait out the special one. Her special two is a little bit difficult to, uh, to dodge. Um, I always miss time the like the electric ball thing that she throws at the end. Um, so I just try and keep her under bar. Got some nice network connection issues here, of course. You know, wouldn't be wouldn't be this game without bugs and connection issues. So, all right, here we have a uh, just a rank three uh, gr green goblin on Optimist Recovery Limber. Um, nothing really special here. R three, so you know I'm gonna destroy him with with an R five blade with Danger Sense. Um, I don't even really have to worry about the Limber node because I, I think I only parry him like three or four times the whole fight. Um, there you go. What is it? There you go. 17 hits and Green Goblin goes down. So Now we're getting into the uh, meat of the path here. So we have a Kingpin on the Buffet Recovery node. And as usual, we will be taking in Blade with Ghost Rider um, for that extra damage. Uh, wasn't too long ago, I think it was Season 7, uh, I think I was facing Kingpin on like every node. I'm, I'm looking at my stats here now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 of 12 wars in Season 7 I had a Kingpin on this node, so uh, very common. Um, actually, we put a Kingpin on, on this node um, in one of our battle groups. I'm not going to tell you which one, <laughs> but... Uh, you know, there, there are other ways to counter him. Um, a lot of people bring Sparky uh, to this fight, um, which is a little easier because you don't need to dedicate two champion spots for him, um, and you don't have to... Uh, the fight doesn't last as long because you're basically just building up poise, building up to an S2, and then usually he's dead after that. But, uh, you know, I'm pretty comfortable using Blade here. Um, you know, in war, I, I only use, you know, Void or Blade, pretty much. Um, so, you know, my Sparky sits on defense uh, most of the time. So, maybe one day I'll try this fight with Sparky um, if my Blade is otherwise occupied. But I don't envision a scenario where, where I need to change strategies here. Um, so, this is going pretty fast. Just got to keep the Bleed cycling with the S1. I do miss a parry there, take a couple hits, but um, it's okay. I don't think I need, I don't think I need Blade for another fight um, this war. So he can take as much damage as he wants as long as he lives. 
finish him off with an S2, and down he goes. All right, next up is the explosive personality armor up, or aggression armor node, sorry. Um, and this is a MODOK. Um, now you notice he has persistent charges, but they apparently don't show up when he's unduped. Or <clears throat> maybe the correct answer to that is they only show up after he wins a fight. Um, I could have sworn that at some point in the past, um, his charges showed zero. Um, maybe that has changed. Um, maybe not. I, I, I can't remember. Uh, either way, the strategy for this fight is pretty much the same as it is for an Iron Man on this node. Um, it's a little easier because you can parry and you have infinite parries. Uh, you don't have to bait out heavy attacks here, which is nice. So just parry heavy, repeat. Um, whenever I push him over a bar, I immediately back off uh, to dodge the, the special one. Um, I think I go this entire fight without missing uh, <laughs> missing an evade on the special one. So that was that was pretty successful. I think <laughs> you know sometimes it's it, it's it's hard to tell. Like you know you usually activate three dexterity buffs, um, or rather dex activates three times, but it feels like sometimes dex activates four times. Um, meaning you know you'll you'll get three of them show up but the fourth won't hit you so it it feels inconsistent i don't know how many hit events are in that special one but um you have to you have to do it like right as he leans forward um and distance is your friend um maybe that maybe that's why i'm i'm having some success here because i'm backing up so far uh that i'm i'm straight up missing the the last hit event in there so so just to finish him off we'll activate the s3 we'll let void uh, get the kill, get that special animation here, uh, rather than switching to sentry, and bye bye MODOK. So, that was a pretty good fight. Don't often face MODOKs on that node. Alright, next up we have a Mystic Champ on the Recovery Arc Overload. You can see from the three persistent charges there that it is a Mephisto, who is the only Mep uh, Mystic Champ who starts with three. Uh, considered briefly doing Blade for this, um, for Danger Sense. However, um, you know the the safer play here was just to use Void because even with Danger Sense, you're going to activate uh, the Aura of Incineration. You know, at some point, um, I think this actually was a rank five Mephisto. So, um, you know, that incinerate damage on somebody who is not immune is no joke. Um, you know, plus with the threat of Arc Overload and Blade having not really a, a consistent way to um, to prevent that from happening other than Danger Sense. I, I really felt like Void was the, the smarter play here. Uh, incinerate Immunity, um, he can't completely reverse the regen because Mephisto is uh, immune to damage while he is regenerating, but he won't actually gain any health once I have the Petrifies and or Fear the Void up. So, um, so at this point, the Arc Overload is nerfed. He's activated his regen, but he's not gaining any health. Uh, he's continuing to degen himself to death, um, and then it's really just a matter of, um, you know, baiting those special ones. He's not getting any power from his aura. In fact, now he is losing power um, from his aura. So uh, I have to be careful when I'm expecting to back off and parry. And if I'm not watching the bar closely enough, I'll be trying to bait a special attack that he doesn't have. So, all right, last but maybe least <laughs> is is a six-star King Groot on the recovery strike back. So Unduped King Groot does not have any regen active, um, but if you push him to his S2, I don't think you can fully evade that. <clears throat> so I don't want to do that at all. Um, the other thing you got to worry about with King Groot um, is the the Fury buffs um, will help him shrug off debuffs. So that includes parry stuns, that includes the excuse me, the uh, intimidating presence debuffs. Um, normally, I I don't even pay attention to him um, because even if he uh, even if he shrugs one off there, it, it doesn't matter. And now you see, I purposely ran in there um, to get a permanent armor break on myself. Um, I was feeling uh, I don't know I was feeling kind of cheeky doing that um, just to heal up to full, just because I could. Um, I might have had uh, some boss action later, but I, it it ended up not not working out that way. But um, so you get the permanent armor break by specifically dashing in 
uh, during a special one on, when he's swinging the, uh, his fist thing, um, and he has to have a Fury buff, um, otherwise it won't work. Um, and if he has the Fury buff and you dash in, you get a permanent arm break. I run full willpower, so you can see here I'm running full yellow bar here, which is nice. Uh, so, you know, an easy sacrifice to make, you know, take a, a, take a hit and some, you know, short-term damage for some long-term gains. Um, it would have been nice if I had needed this, you know, health gain, but um, turns out I didn't, so. Uh, so he shrugs off the last debuff there, uh, but the Fear of the Void timer, thankfully, isn't reset when I do that, but, you know, either way, he goes down uh, and is dead. So another good war for me, no deaths, no items. Uh, however, we did lose again. This is our fourth loss in a row, bringing our record to a measly 2-4 and four for the season. Uh, we're still in Tier 2, though, so, you know, a Tier 2 loss is, you know, is nothing to, to sneeze at in terms of point. Um, and we are clearing, so at least we're getting, you know, points, but we're just not... Just got to get over that hill. I feel like if we get, <clears throat> if we stack one win, we can stack two and kind of go on a mini roll. So we'll see what happens. Um, on a personal note, um, I have one more war that's happening right now, um, but I don't know when I will be able to record and upload some additional videos um, for the rest of the season. Uh, so my wife and I are, are expecting our third child tomorrow. Um, it is a, a planned uh, C-section. Um, so I will not have much time on my hands to record, um, and I think I'm even working it out with um, the other guys in my battle group um, that I'll be running back up um, for the next few wars, and somebody else can take my path. So uh, I don't know when next time will be, but until next time, thank you for watching, and have a good one.